We carry a casino around in our pockets 24-7. Pandemic lockdowns and the cost of living crisis have driven more people to gambling to help ease financial struggles, with helplines receiving record-breaking calls for help. More than 400,000 British gamblers lose at least £2,000 a year. So 75% of our callers are actually citing financial difficulties. And an increasing number of women are turning to betting. They make up a third of the callers to the National Gambling Helpline. Gambling cost me my house, so I ended up homeless, lost everything. More than one in ten of those women are gambling to supplement household incomes and their families. But how did they get into it in the first place and what's being done to help them? I'm Kimberly Leonard in for Neil Patterson, and this is the Sky News Daily. I'll be speaking to a treatment manager at one of the leading gambling charities about how women are struggling and the support available. But first, Lisa Walker. She knows the devastation gambling addiction can cause. So I started to gamble at quite a young age, about eight years old, quite innocently. And I was taken on holiday to South End on Sea, where there'd be penny arcade. And I sort of had used to bet sort of two p, five p. Lisa now works as a peer support worker for the charity Bet No More and runs their women-only programme New Beginnings. When I became a teenager, sort of like 18, went to the bingo hall, put a bet on the Grand National. Perhaps I spent 20 quid or £2 on a, on a bet on the Grand National, so it wasn't ever seen as a problem. But obviously, as the years went on and, you know, the time went on, I did find fruit machines and roulette tables and everything else that went along with gambling. But it wasn't until I reached the age of 29 that I sort of became a compulsive gambler where I couldn't stop. It's interesting that you say you started gambling at eight because one doesn't really associate a kid in, a, in I suppose it's an arcade, as gambling. But unfortunately, when, you look, when I look back, even, you know, I can remember when I was eight years old going to the arcades and getting my pot of two peas and pushing the two peas out and I remember sort of getting excited when they used to drop at such a young age and then watching my dad on the fruit machines and sort of like the age of sort of 10, 11, knowing how to play a fruit machine, I didn't know that, you know, my dad had a problem with gambling as I was young. I didn't, you know, I didn't know until my later life. So for you, when did gambling really start to become a, a bigger issue in your life and a problem? When I had the huge win, I was 29 years old and I won a six-figured sum. You know, life-changing money. Unfortunately, looking back, it was the worst thing that possibly could have ever happened to me because that was the day that everything changed. Because once I won that money, I thought I could win it again. And it sort of led me into other... I sort of really got into gambling and started finding out fruit machines, roulette tables, blackjack, poker, the higher amount, going into bookmakers, dog racing, horse racing, you name it. I was addicted to it. How much of your day, Lisa, did you spend gambling? I suppose from the age of 29 to 45, I gambled probably every day. Some days it would just be an hour. Some weekends I'd gamble. 10, 12 hours in a casino from morning till night or night till morning, depending on if I had my children or not and if I could get out. You know, I lost so much time, time that I'm never ever going to get back. So what eventually happened? What did your gambling cost you? My children are 26 and 27 years old now. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, when they were 10 and 11, gambling cost me my house. So I ended up homeless, lost everything. You know, I went to my local council, felt so much shame and guilt and stigma around my gambling. I was um, I was made to feel like I, I was a fraud. There wasn't the help out there that I needed. Gambling cost me my marriage. Um, I split out with my husband. And, yeah, and it, and it led me to some very, very deep, dark places. Can you just explain that a bit more? When you went to the council and asked for help, you've lost your home. You've got these two kids, 10 and 11, and they made you feel like a fraud. This was 15 years ago. So I went up to the council with my children and I was interviewed by a housing officer. When they found out that 
I'd gambled my money away and lost a lot of money. I was told that if I'd have been a drug addict or an alcoholic, they could have pointed me in the right direction for help. But what are they supposed to do with a compulsive gambler? And almost sort of like the, the guilt and the blame that I felt in the room that day, I'll never forget ever. You know, I felt so low, uh, so lonely, so isolated and thinking, why doesn't anybody understand that oh, I've got an addiction to gambling and I need help? I haven't done it on purpose. I haven't lost this money on purpose. You know, I just need to be signposted to someone that can help me and no one did. Five years ago, I got married in Vegas, my current husband. We was in the capital city, you know, the world for gambling. I left my wedding party uh, to go and gamble. And uh, that's what I did all night. I took out a payday loan, which was wired to my bank account from England. Um, so I could gamble and have the funds to do it. And then, you know, sort of like the next day, uh, the day after my wedding, I started my marriage off on a lie. Did your husband know what you were doing? Yeah, so me and my husband met nine years ago. He knew my story. But again, I'm a compulsive gambler. I'm good at lying. I'm good at hiding things. So he thought that I was just going to the casino once a week to play my poker, which I was. But unfortunately, once I got knocked out of the poker competition, I was going next door into the casino where they had all the tables, like the roulette and the blackjack and every fruit machine. Um, and I was taking out credit cards, payday loans. So we, we got back from Vegas and um, I had to pay this £2,000 back that I borrowed. It was a very, very high interest as well because I was bankrupt as well at the time. And I needed this £2,000. So I reached out to my son, who was 21 at the time, and uh, said, like, could you lend me this money? And he did. Transferred it to my account, thinking you know, that I was going to pay it off and I didn't. I went into the bookmakers where I live and within 35 minutes I spent the £2,000 and that's when I know that is when I hit rock bottom. So what did you do and where did you get that help? So I reached out to a friend that was in Gamblers Anonymous and he told me that I need to get to a meeting. This was my third attempt at Gamblers Anonymous and he told me to get back and he told me that this time I've got to listen because there weren't going to be any more chances because I'd already lost my home. And the next thing really is death because there's nothing else because I was so rock bottom. So I went to GA, there was 35 men and one other woman. And I sat there, told my story. I got home that night. Um, I arranged for a big family meeting and uh, just told them everything, everything, like my everything out on the table said to him that I need help, I'm a compulsive gambler. My son listened to me and uh, said, like, you know, we're going to get through it. Touch wood. Now, I've been bet free. That's fantastic. And you're now a peer support worker in the sector. Just tell us a bit more about the programme that you run. So I run a 10-week programme now called New Beginning for women only. And uh, they come in and we talk about different subjects every week. After the 10 weeks, the women are then referred to our health and wellbeing groups that we run because I've always said that you don't have an addiction for 10 weeks. An addiction is a lifelong program and I know that I've got to go to GA for the rest of my life. You know, the women that come in are pretty much rock bottom because they feel like there isn't any out, there's no other women you know, that are gambling until they come in and meet other women that are and then they realise they're not alone. When people need support with their gambling addiction, they might come across someone like Lisa Patton, a treatment service manager at the charity GamCare. I have a team who support people with gambling issues and their affected others. We offer CBT-based therapy to support people to see alternative ways of not gambling and promoting healthier lifestyles. In January, we had a record number of calls to our helpline. It was up 17% on the January of 2022. 
that can be a combination of things off of the back of the World Cup. Christmas, obviously, electricity bills, gas bills are increasing. So 75% of our callers are actually citing financial difficulties. We will find people are bored, they're isolated, they are chasing losses, so they might have had a big win previously. It's very accessible through the internet or on the phone, and they have got bills to pay, they've got children to feed, and it's trying to make that money up that they might have potentially lost previously. And are you seeing more women who need access to help? Yes and no. We would like more women to come forward. It's a very hidden addiction. We talk about in gambling, you see a behaviour change if it's alcohol or drugs, but with gambling, I could be sitting on the train with you or on a bus and you wouldn't know. You would think I was texting, whereas I actually could be gambling. So it is very hidden and there's a lot of shame and guilt, particularly around women, for them when they are when they are gambling, actually, to admit it. I think we, we look to, to women to be like households sometimes to be like the the breadwinner that keeps it all together and that it can be partly escapism from from daily life it can be mental health issues that they're, they're experiencing so that's where you can go away and you can you can gamble to escape escape those kind of daily daily things that are going on in your life and it's taking that first step and and saying there is no shame, there is no guilt that I am gambling. It's not any different to whether I, I would be smoking or drinking or taking drugs as an addiction. And it's it's how do, how do we support women best to feel safe in safe spaces. Other places that women tend to find, there's a lot of male-dominated spaces, so they don't feel comfortable. And how has it changed since the pandemic, just in general? The gambling world, women seeking help, men seeking help, how has it changed? Obviously, unfortunately, like a lot of people had to, to go back into their houses. So potentially women, particularly around domestic abuse, were back going back into the, that space. So it's that safety again. A lot of people are in their house, they're bored. And we, we have very much, we've moved online. Everything's online now um, and advertising is all online. You're presented with that every day. You mentioned the cost of living crisis and how it's affected people you said that people are turning to gambling to earn an extra buck but do they actually make money or do you end up losing more money than you actually started out with they end up losing more money but in in their case they think that they are making more money and that's why we talk about chasing losses and the cost of living crisis has increased people looking for support around that to to make that money up but they think in their heads that they're going to win when when they're not but the majority um, of our women are all online gambling so we very much stereotype women to bingo halls and men to bookies but actually we tend to find that it's online gambling and scratch cards as well are prevalent as well where it's a quick easy fix you're looking for that adrenaline rush the brain does change when, when when you're chasing um chasing that win so what do you do if you need support where do you go so we would encourage people particularly to call our national helpline, which is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So we have trained advisors there who are they're sitting just now waiting to, to take your call. We work alongside them to make them feel comfortable because it might be the first time. And, and that's it sounds scary for people because, as I said, it's a very secretive addiction, but there will be no judgment from us. Now a former gambler, Lisa wants to share her story as a lesson for others. I think people say the cost of living crisis, and obviously it is a crisis. Gas, electric, food, petrol, everything's going up. And I think people are sort of like betting 10 or 20 quid to try to win 40 or 50 pounds, perhaps to help them with their shopping. And they're obviously getting reeled in um, by some of the operators that are offering free bets, free spin, sign-up offers. And I just like, would like to say, just be really, really careful. When people think, listen, let me just put ten, £10 down because I need £50 just to cover the shopping, it, it really works out like that, doesn't it? You often end up losing. Well, yeah, you do. But obviously, if you, if you do bet £10 and you do win £50, you're obviously £40 in profit. Now, some people might think, wow, that was easy, I've just made 40 quid in two minutes or 10 minutes. How easy was that? So now I might put that 40 quid to try to win £100. And then it's like the, the snowball effect. 
it's like the vicious circle, you know, and it's just making sure that you've got your boundaries in place, that you, you know, that you don't bet more than you can afford to lose. If you're concerned about your own gambling or that of a loved one, you can contact the National Gambling Helpline on 0808 8020133 and they're available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. My thanks to Lisa Walker and Lisa Patton and to you for tuning in to the Sky News Daily with me, Kimberly Leonard. This episode was produced by Soila Aparicio and the editor is Philly Beaumont. <laughs>